Welcome to the Fun Astrology Podcast for Tuesday, July 5th, 2022. Glad you're here. Thank you. Hope you had a good holiday weekend. Got some fireworks in. I saw a great display over the Lake Junaluska area uh, where they shoot fireworks off a bridge there, and it was great. Still, if you would like to come on the trip, if you can scramble it together and get to western North Carolina in early August, we'd love to have you. The weather's going to be great, and we will be walking around that very lake together. Yesterday, I mentioned that we would set up the month today. I'm going to kick that down to tomorrow because I've been thinking about this, the M&Ms here, Mars, Mercury, and the Moon, all changing signs today. Two of them already have. Mars is now in Taurus. Mercury is now in Cancer. Later today, 625 this evening, the moon will enter Libra. It has a four and a half hour void of course ahead of that. So the void of course is at, let's just use round numbers here, two o'clock. Void of course till 625. Now let's put our astrological thinking caps on here and dissect a few things. All right, so first of all, Mars moving into Taurus. That happened at two o'clock this morning. So there is an interesting correlation of this. All right, listen to this, and then we'll kind of pick it apart. Mars rules Aries. It moved from Aries into Taurus. Mercury rules Gemini. It moved from Gemini into Cancer. The moon rules Cancer. (laughs) And the moon is moving into Libra. Now, if you just sit and think about all of that for a minute, you'll kind of come up with the theme that I'm playing with here. First of all, let's get solidly fixed in our mind the difference between ruling a sign and visiting a sign, especially the next sign from the one that you rule. I think of this analogy, and it's just this is personal, but I hope it communicates. I think of when I moved out of my home where I was raised and then established my own home the way I wanted to do things, where I wanted to put things, how I wanted to interact with those things and my environment versus when I would go back to my parents' house and especially even when my dad had passed and my mom was just there by herself, my mom had a lot of unwritten rules and you never knew where they were or when they would come out. So when I went back, it was walking on eggshells That was not my environment. I didn't call the shots. I couldn't do what I wanted to do comfortably. I had to tiptoe around and try not to offend. And then when I did, the wrath of Khan came down from the sky in a lightning bolt. So can you imagine Mars in Aries? I mean, that's just such a hand-in-glove fit, right? The aggression of Mars combined with the new life of spring That's our tropical western zodiac's first sign, Aries, new life. It's springtime. Let's go. Let's grow. Let's start new things. Let's bloom because we've got work to do. Mars and its tense, crisp, aggressive energy. Do you watch the SpaceX rockets launch? That's Mars on the lifting pad. When they say three, two, one, Mars right there. That's your image. Now, Think of a beautiful mountain field in the summertime, wildflowers growing on the lush vegetation of the mountain slope, puffy white clouds in the sky. The birds are singing and filling the air with their sound. A chipmunk comes up and checks you out and then realizes, eh, no food here, go on down the road. You hear the sound of a babbling brook nearby. You're perhaps even resting there on a picnic blanket with your beloved, holding hands or heads resting on shoulders. And all of a sudden, with the sound of breaking glass, Mars comes crashing into that scene. It's almost like you remember the old commercials. Now, this is dating me. It goes back to the 70s and 80s when John Madden did that Miller beer commercial and he would come breaking through the the paper background that they had set up. And he's like, what's going on? <laughs> That's Mars comes crashing the beautiful Taurian party of serenity and calmness and peace. And it's tense and conflicted because it's, where am I? What just happened? And that's the tension of this crossover that happened at 2 o'clock this morning. So now, all of a sudden, we have the nature of Taurus, 
calm, grounded, collected, peaceful, serenity is like the most important thing. Mars, like a bull moose in a china closet, the cauldron of where we are now in our world collectively. And what we have set up now is a battle. Who's going to win? Is the Mars energy going to overtake Taurus and disrupt Taurus and make Taurus tense? Or is Taurus going to calm Mars down? Then let's think of the collective versus the individual. I read over the weekend that over the 4th of July weekend, the independence celebration of the 246th birthday of America, 38%, according to a Gallup poll, said they were proud to be an American. That is energy is going to process this tension differently than you and I. You and I will look at our natal charts, we might look at our progressed charts or our solar arc charts, and we'll find out what houses and aspects conflict with this tension that is definitely there. It's just how are we going to process it? And then we'll make choices accordingly, and because we live conscious lives, chances are we will err to a more peaceful, calm, serene response to the tension when it comes up. We'll identify it, and we'll shift it. The collective whole doesn't have those tools, basically, so they are likely to be driven by the conflict. All right, let's talk about Mercury real quick. Mercury rules Gemini. Now it's in Cancer. Those are as different as they can be. Gemini all chatty all over the place, you know, duality, the mind, communication, learning, the intellect, dissecting and parsing everything to be able to account for it mentally. The unique ability to perform so many multiple tasks at once. Cancer, the crab, very intuitively connected, connection with the soul, the crab. Home-based. In fact, you carry your home around with you. <laughs> so as Mars tripwires itself into Taurus, Mercury tripwires into Cancer. The struggle? Will intuition win out over being in your head? Or will Mercury come in hot and disrupt that connection to your soul with a to-do list? Or like I experienced yesterday, feelings of inadequacy because of the rat-tat-tat, the dual pull. And see, both of these are happening at the same time. All right, I'm going to leave this as a cliffhanger because I do want to respect your time. So we will talk about the third of the M&Ms tomorrow, the moon. So in this same theme, think about this. Think through this now. Maybe even we could get some conversation going in the Discord group about how does the moon moving into Libra affect what we just set up? I'll let you think that through, and we'll talk about that tomorrow. And hopefully, we'll get to set up the rest of the month. You guys have a great day. We'll see how the market responds to especially Mars moving into the sign of money. But, okay, hint here. The moon is moving into Libra. Think it through. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.